All right, we'll get people to trickle in. Awesome to see some familiar, I was gonna say faces, but I guess names on, on the chat or on the attendee list. But thank you everyone for, for joining and really excited to, to uh, kind of moderate this or I guess host this next session with Nurkrin and really just to get an update on what they've been doing in the Huntington's disease space, the latest research update. And so here we have Tyler and Olga uh, from Neurocrine. They'll share a little bit more about them, their, their role at Neurocrine. And I'm going to just say thank you again, Tyler and Olga for being here. So Tyler, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Seth. Let me just share my screen here. Give me one second. All right, Seth, can you just confirm that you can see the presentation now? I can, yep, we're good to go. All right, perfect. All right, well, let's kick off. Thanks so much. Um, hi, my name is Tyler Reagan. I'm, I'm Director of Patient Engagement and Advocacy at Neurocrine Biosciences, a neuroscience-focused biopharmaceutical company based in San Diego, California. Um, it's really a pleasure to be with you today for us to tell you a little bit about Neurocrine Biosciences and our HD development program. Uh, first, we want to thank HDO for the opportunity to speak with you, and we also want to thank you, the HDO community, for spending part of your Saturday with us. Connect HD2 is an open-label study to evaluate the long-term safety and tolerability of valbenazine for the treatment of chorea in HD, and it's currently ongoing. Neurocrine is excited to review the complete data and to begin to prepare a supplemental new drug application which is the application that we would submit to the US Food and Drug Administration later this year uh, for, for approval. As the study and application process progresses, we look forward to continuing to keep the HD community up to, date, up to date on these important developments as soon as we're able to. Today, we're just gonna give really a brief overview of Neurocrine Biosciences and the Connect HD2 study. Um, and we really look forward to, to coming back and be able to present more in the future. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to take any live questions today, unfortunately, um, but we do encourage you, if you have questions, feel free to go into the lounge and put those into the chat function and we can work with HDO to uh, try to field those questions offline. You can also learn more about the study at uh, huntingtonstudygroup.org. Again, that's huntingtonstudygroup.org. So with that, I would like to now introduce Olga Klepskaya, did I, I think I, I got wrong, Olga. Please correct me on the last name, but Olga is a physician by training and a medical director at Neurocrine Biosciences to share this update with you. Olga? All right. Um, thank you so much for inviting us uh, here to talk to you today and meet with you, uh, albeit virtually. I want to uh, correct something that Tyler said. I'm not only a physician by training, I am a physician with many, many years of experience in treating movement disorders. Um, and that definitely includes Huntington disease. I've seen a lot of Huntington disease patients all over my clinical um, career. And um, uh, I remember a lot of them patients and their families because it's really a family affair. And over the years, uh, you as a physician becoming almost a family member of these people, uh, you know all about them, they know all about you. So <clears throat> I feel a really, really strong connection to Huntington disease community because of uh, spending so many years helping clinically. And now working as a medical director with Neuroclean Biosciences, I feel actually privileged that uh, now I can help not only that particular patient in my office, but a lot of patients around the world by helping bringing new, effective, helpful medications. 
And um, in our company, we have several movement disorders neurologists who are running these clinical trials, who also have experience treating these patients, and we are taking it very, very seriously and very personally, if you will. So the purpose of neuropian biosciences is sim uh, very simple. We are trying to relieve the suffering of those patients who have great needs, but not too many options. And Korea of Huntington disease is one of these uh, situations. Neurocreen is neurosciences based company, and we have projects in neurology, neuroendocrinology, and neuropsychiatry. And um, for Neurocreen was around for about 30 years, and now we have two medications on the market. One is valbenazine for treatment of tardive dyskinesia, and another um, medication for um, that helps treat Parkinson's disease as well. And um, in addition to that, we have so much research going on. And research in neurocreen is happening from the very beginning when scientists sitting in our basements and uh, playing around, if you will, with those molecules, trying to attach certain um, components to the molecule to make it effective working is uh, in vitro, which is in petri dishes in, in a way, in vivo with animals, and only then we are going into clinical studies. And clinically, we have uh, studies going on anywhere from phase one to phase four, all the stages of clinical development. And here you see uh, our pipeline project divided in neurology, neuroendocrinology, and neuropsychiatry. And specifically because Huntington disease is a neurological condition, you will see that we continue researching Huntington disease, as Tyler had mentioned, in tardive dyskinesia, in cerebral palsy, and in essential tremor, which is actually the most common movement disorder. We are very excited about that pipeline project, as well as in certain epilepsies. And we are not shy of studying very rare disorders. For example, one of those subtypes of epilepsy, as of recently, had only 4,000 patients around the globe, so extra rare disorder, and spread all the way to essential tremor, which is the most common movement disorder. We are trying to go where the need is, and we are trying to work hard to bring in these medications to our patients, including Huntington disease patients as well. Um, so we, uh, and if you can go to the next slide, Tyler, please. Um, the study of, uh, you know, Huntington disease. Unfortunately, uh, you are all are very, very intimately involved in the um, Huntington disease. And you know, probably uh, more than anybody, I actually love when I'm giving lectures, I, I love to to bring my patients and their family members to talk about the experience. So your experience, your knowledge is very, very, very important. And you can, as you can see here, it's not a very common disorder, but very, very important uh, disorder. And about 90% of the patients with Huntington disease have this movement disorder, the hallmark of Huntington disease called Korea. Korea in translation from Greek is dance, you probably know. And Korea is characterized by abnormal and involuntary movements, dance-like, abrupt, irregular, that can affect any part of the body. And therefore, it's not only um, inconvenient and also causes some social embarrassment, but also it causes functional problems because it can affect speech swallowing, balance and posture, and many, many, many other functions of the body. So that's what um, the medication valbenazine is aimed on. It's aimed on um, a, a treatment of chorea in Huntington disease. But as we mentioned, and they will report, uh, repeat over and over again, it is not approved yet. And uh, Neurocreen is aiming on submitting to FDA new drug application for Korea in Huntington disease. Next slide, please, Tyler. And uh, 
as far as studies, the Connect HD study was a randomized blinded study that was completed in 2021. We are very excited. And thank you, anybody, uh, maybe somebody online participated or somebody you know participated. That was really, really a big endeavor. Hunting and study group helped us. And we all know what kind of times were they with this pandemic. The study was started going, stopped again and it was really really complicated but it was completed thanks to community thanks to patients and researchers who were devoted to the study we were very excited about the results and now uh, connect hd2 study it's a two years open label treatment and the goal of the study to look at long term safety and efficacy, uh, tolerability of the medication and long-term maintenance of this effect of improvement of Huntington disease Korea. There are altogether 150 participants um, with ge genetically confirmed diagnosis of Parkinson disease is being enrolled in the study and they will be receiving valbenazine for uh, 104 weeks, which is two years. Um, again, um, the note for you here that valbenazine had not been approved yet for treatment of Huntington uh, career uh, in the United States by FDA. Next slide, please. And here we have a picture of all those sites around the country that successfully participate in HG2 uh, trial. And we, um, we will be following the sites and working with them closely for up to two years. And we'll update you with information on that study when time comes. And then the first study as uh, sooner than that, as soon as we have information from FDA. Um, again, we are looking forward to working with you in long term. We are here with you uh, long term. We are here with you for foreseeable future. We are devoted to uh, helping patients with, uh, like you with Huntington disease, as well as other movement disorders. We have very strong scientific background over 30 years, developed a lot of molecules. Some of them became medications, as you know, and uh, we are very proud of our devotion to the patients and uh, uh, specifically the relationship that we developed over the last couple of years with Huntington disease community. That's all I wanted to tell you today, and we are looking forward to share more information in near future. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. And uh, you know, with with virtual settings, I will say the timing of this isn't always helpful. I, I hear sirens outside my window, but all is good, right? That's uh, part of the virtual aspect of things. But thank you. Olga and Tyler, again, just for taking some time to provide us with this really important update on what you guys are doing in the Huntington's disease space or what Neurocrine is doing to um, provide, I'm going to say, potential treatment. It's not FDA approved. I'm going to repeat that, but um, it's not approved yet, but looking to see if there's an opportunity for a potential treatment to treat the motor symptoms of Huntington's disease. And so with that being said, um, as Tyler mentioned towards the beginning, if you guys do have questions, check out their booth. They got a lot of great information there. You can, uh, put them or in the chat function for that. And, um, you know, just thank you again. And I know we ended a little bit early, but Tyler and Olga, you guys are free to go. You're good to go. And I'm going to stay on and just share a little bit about my own personal experience, uh, coming from an HD family and what it means to me to be involved in HD research. So thank you again, Olga and Tyler, um, for just being here and taking some time to chat. Thank you, Seth. I actually will stay and will listen to you. Oh, geez. <laughs> really, that's what is on. really excited to hear you and to know your story. Yeah, Seth, I've seen your TED Talk before, so definitely want to stick around <laughs> as well. So thanks a yeah, lot. I mean, thanks, everybody. 
Yeah, no problem. If and Olga and Tyler, feel free to turn your cameras off if, if you want. Um, that's totally fine as well. But yeah, I mean, really just to kind of share a little bit about my personal story. You may have heard it in a prior session, but I'll try to give it at a higher, higher, higher level. And so, you know, my, my mom had Huntington's disease for about 17 years of my life. Her, her seven year anniversary is coming up actually in a, in a few weeks. And it's, it's been quite the journey for myself because I learned about it when I was just 15 and I tested positive at the age of 20. I'm considered pre-symptomatic. I'm 31 now. But for me, it's it's been a great opportunity just to continue to learn about research, to understand it, and to really then now be active in playing a role in research. And so for that being said, you may say, well, how do I do that? How do I get involved in trials or just understanding where do I turn to learn about research happening in, in the Huntington's disease space? For me to learn about these trials, I go to a few different sources, HD Buzz. If you're not familiar with them, highly recommend it. It breaks it down into, I'm gonna say plain English, very easy to understand. They pro always provide great updates on what's going on in, in the research space. Another one is I have Google Alerts for Huntington's disease. And I've honestly have learned so much from those because I get updates about what's going on in the community, but also what's going on in, in, in research with different companies. And, you know, Neurocrine is one of many, many companies working in the space. And that's what excites me because when I first learned about it, there's probably one or two companies working in HD. And now, you know, I had my own little spreadsheet and I, I've lost track, but it was up to like 20 to 25 and there's probably even more now a lot of them are in preclinical um, and I'm going to get back to that as well but the last place also is, is Twitter uh, you got to love Twitter I'm a, I'm a big uh, Twitter guy tweet guy I would say you know when you look at hashtag Huntington's disease that's um, you know a place where you can find it and then as Jenna just put in the chat uh, there's also you know on the HDO website that has a list of what's going on in in current clinical trials and understanding research but I'm going to kind of try to break down from what I know about trials just real quick so I mentioned preclinical right and so that's animal models so that's not even in, in the human side and that takes a long time to go from an animal to a human right because we're, we're our cells our, our body set up very different than say a, a mouse model or a you know, non-human primate model or, you know, sheep model, right? And so I think it's important to understand that it does take a long time to bring something to human trials. And then, you know, going from there, you can think about, you know, phase one, right? That's looking mainly at, at the safety piece. And then you got phase two looking more at efficacy, followed by, you know, if things are looking promising, then you go into a larger sample size phase three, which is what neurocrine is currently in. Um, and so you got to just think about it. it does take a long time. It takes on average 10 to 15 years. Uh, it could even take even longer to bring a drug uh, to market that to make it FDA approved or, you know, approved in your specific country. And so, you know, with that being said, how do people like myself and many community members get involved? Well, I think one is trying to see if you're HD specialist knows about trials that you might be able to be a good fit in and seeing if you might be able to qualify. Uh, there's other also observational studies that you can think about. Uh, Enroll HD is being is one of them that's around the world or reaching out to again your HD specialist to see if there's any studies that you might be able to participate in that aren't involved in a treatment but that can also help us understand the science behind HD. So for me personally, I've done Enroll HD I've done an exercise study, and in a few days, I'll be doing my second round of uh, Prevent HD, which is formerly known as Predict HD, which is, you know, these are all observational studies. These are ways for me to get involved because I really want to help the research realm of things. And so I, you know, I challenge all of you that are listening to try to get in more, you know, engaged in research and don't be afraid to ask questions and also just, you know, I'll say it in a nice way, push back when you're saying, no, I, I want to get involved. I want to help out. I want to 
make a difference in the community by, you know, you know, playing a, a bigger role in research, because that's kind of where I'm at right now. Although I'm considered pre-symptomatic, you know, I, I'm guaranteed to get this. I essentially have to have to wait, uh, you know, until potentially being sick in order to participate in the study. And I think that's where we need to look at HD differently. We need to figure out ways to better understand how to treat it as soon as possible. I know a lot easier said than done, but with all of us coming together and saying, hey, are we willing to take a risk and to participate in a study? Or would we rather wait until we're starting to show symptoms? And that's something that personally for me, try and understand each and every day of how can I, you know, really not just share my story, but also, you know, participate in some of these studies before showing symptoms. So with that being said, I just wanted to, you know, share a little bit again about myself, um, knowing that the whole concept and maybe some people here can relate of always hearing from many people over the last 16 years that there's a treatment right around the corner. And as much as I do believe that, I, I want to personally help continue to move that. And rather than hearing right around the corner, I wanted to say, let's, let's do this now. Because for me, I'm running out of time, right? I think anyone who might be considered, you know, pre-symptomatic might feel the same way where, you know, it, every year is one year closer for me to potentially so, show symptoms and end up like my mom one day. And I don't want that. I want to be able to help now and not have to wait. And so I think that's where the more we can get people in the HE community to speak up, share their story, to say, hey, I want to participate in a study. Hey, I'm willing to take that risk. The more likely we're able to advance uh, potential you know, treatment options for HD to really improve quality of life. And you know, quality of life for me might be very different from uh, someone else, but I think there we will see a lot of overlap in really saying, hey, if I can, you know, help improve my motor symptoms or my behavioral or, or my cognitive symptoms, even a little bit, that, that may be the, the difference right there. So with that being said, I don't know if anyone has any specific questions or thoughts behind this. Um, feel free to, to always reach out to me personally if if interested in learning how you can get involved, I'm always willing to be uh, an additional resource to you. So you, you you know you can find me either on social, or you can kind of reach out here. I'm going to be here all weekend. But with that being said, you know I know that we have about six minutes to go until our next session, and I'm going to actually see if our panelists from our next session are willing to come on video. And I'm not gonna say we're gonna start early, but just to come on video so that uh, we can maybe chat a little bit more uh, before the next session starts. Cause I don't think anyone wants to hear me continue to, to ramble on about my, my uh, talk, but hello, Ashley. Hi. And hello, Emma. Hi. I know we have, I know we have another Emma, but she may be probably listening to pump up music, getting pumped for this. <laughs> you know. That's what I've just been doing. I was just going to say, yeah, tell, you know, while we have about five minutes, maybe uh, each of you can share what's your, what's your way to prepare for a talk or what, what is your pump up music? What? I listen to about absolutely anything. Um, my new job has me out in the road a lot. So anything that comes on the radio. Um, but I always try to prepare. Um, I'll make little notes and just like little bullet points, you know, that I know I want to hit in the conversation and that. And to be honest, I'm going to share a little trade secret. Nine times out of 10, the organizers of the event that you're speaking at, they will send you little heads up questions and they'll give you a few talking points to help you get going. That's awesome. Emma, what about you? You mentioned um, this, you're getting pumped. This is actually my first ever talk that I've done. <laughs> All so. right. I'm terrified, but it'll oh, be fine. Oh, you'll be fine. I've done what Ashley did and I've done bullet points. So <laughs> I'm like, if I look down, it's because I've lost where I am. 
no worries no worries i think at the end of the day my big biggest piece of advice is you know your story more than anyone else so if you do forget something or mess up yeah. no one's gonna know except for no you. one will know yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's for anybody that is thinking about speaking out or has been asked to speak, um, my biggest piece of advice would be just speak from your heart and be honest and open as much as you feel comfortable with. Um, but yeah, definitely just speak from your heart. Yeah, definitely. That's what I'm planning on doing. <laughs> there you go. And no, I don't want to jump too far ahead. I'm like excited for your session, to be honest. <laughs> Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on social media as well. And so it's just learning tips and tricks from you all and hearing, you know, how you kind of share your story on that. And like, I, now I'm, I'm like, there's so many social media channels now. For me, I'm just like, I can't keep up with all of them. I, it's yeah. a mind, isn't it? Like, I, I've literally just over the last couple of weeks set up a Facebook page and I'm like, I just can't do Instagram and Facebook. Like, <laughs> it's just impossible. <laughs> as well as my own personal accounts as well. I just, I focus on one and then seem to neglect the other for ages and then remember that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not just my pops in HD. I'm Emma as well. But yeah, it's, easy, isn't it? it's, it's definitely finding a good balance, um, mm -hmm. you know, and knowing like how much do you want to share what do you want to share um there's the awesome feature there's so many apps and stuff out there that you can like pre-plan and stuff um we were literally having a little discussion just before the session started and I was like I legit spend about three hours on a Sunday planning my content for um the week ahead um I set myself the goal in 2022 to be a lot more consistent um with my posting and my sharing um but yeah you do definitely need to find that balance and have some like time away from the screen and time away from social media and just be present in your life and in that moment awesome Emma all right since there's two of you should I just, say, just like, call me Terra Nova that's normally what people call me Terra Nova <laughs> Yeah. Hey, um, I used to work with an Emma, and so I'm always known as Emma Two. So. Oh, that makes me feel bad. You're not Emma. You're never Emma Two. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> All right, Emma Squared. Are you both from uh, from the UK? Yeah, and actually, I think yeah, we're not actually that far from each other. No, we were all going to meet up, weren't we? And then it snowed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We had, we had to a, all meet up and actually get together for the yeah. first time ever, and then it snowed. I woke he, up and was like, Are you guys coming? And you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was whenever I was over visiting with Charlie who does yeah. um you me and HD and Haley from HDYO was gonna come and join us and then a massive snowstorm hit and we all got grounded and thought it was safer if we stayed at home <laughs> but it was funny yeah. how you managed to fly over from Northern Ireland yet we couldn't <laughs> drive like an hour on the road <laughs> typical Brits that yeah <laughs> that's that is that I mean a you can't you can't beat the snow, right? I mean, <laughs> I hear you on that one. In, in Britain, they're just going to melt down if there's any yeah. weather. Fine, away literally, from it, it cut everything down. <laughs> yeah, the world comes to an end. <laughs> All right, do you before we get started? Because I know we just hit two o'clock, but we'll let people trickle in. I gotta ask, 